Well, today on Channels Television, I'm Cynthia Ara. Today our focus is basically on Africa, and we begin speaking about the Ebola virus disease. Now, without a doubt, the virus has been claiming more lives since the outbreak back in March this year. The World Health Organization has been releasing figures on the number of the dead, which it says is rapidly inching towards 4,500. It also says over 8,000 confirmed, probable, and suspected cases of Ebola have been reported in seven countries as at October the 12th. And many of those cases have been reported in some countries in West Africa. Let's look at how the situation is in three of the countries that are worst affected. Guinea has had 843 deaths with an increase in new cases driven by a rise in infection in the coastal capital Conakry and the district of Koya. Gathering data has been difficult in Liberia, but a high number of cases have been reported in the capital, Monrovia. However, Sierra Leone has had rampant transmission of the disease with 425 new cases between October the 6th and 12th. The major areas hit are Freetown and the neighboring western districts of Bombali and Port. For MSF, it's quite clear that we are reaching our limit. We have been saying that very clearly, that we have reached our limit in terms of increasing. That's why what we still a bit astonished is the very slow and weak capacity of other actors, including state actors, including uh, multilateral uh, organization uh, uh, actors like uh, WHO, like United Nations and so on. I mean, they are deploying as we speak, but we still don't see the result in the field. We limit the number of times that we suit up and go into the actual high risk zone where the patients themselves are to just a, a couple times a day. So as not to, as you said, not to risk overheating, dehydration, or just uh, a little bit too much for one day. You know, you, you need to err on the side of caution rather than the side of full speed ahead. I'm a bit scared of what I, what I will be seeing because I know that there's a lot of human suffering that I will be witnessing. And I'm also scared for our staff because my colleagues will be going back to homes in which their family members might be dying. And I know that uh, some of our colleagues, national staff colleagues, die. And not necessarily, and we do investigate this because they get infected in the center, but because they're part of the community. So that, that is the part that, that scares me the most, you know, seeing for them, for their safety. We're still talking about the Ebola virus disease and the World Health Organization is certain there will be no outbreak of Ebola in the West as they have strong health systems there. The director of strategy, Christopher Dye, however, says the presence of Ebola in the United States is a matter for very serious concern. U.S. health officials have come under fire for their response to Ebola infections in Texas and have begun investigating how two nurses who had tested or who had treated the first U.S. case, Thomas Duncan, contracted the virus. The search is also on for the 132 passengers who boarded the same flight as the second nurse from Cleveland, Ohio, to Texas. Yesterday, the WHO said that if the virus continues to spread at the rate which it's going right now, then there could be between 5,000 to 10,000 cases of the disease per week in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. A top official has said before that an earlier prediction of 20,000 total cases by November looks too conservative and needs to be revised upward. The WHO has reported that the disease is killing more people than initially reported with a 70% fatality rate. That's an increase from the 50% fatality rate as previously believed. Now, the second Dallas nurse to become infected with Ebola arrived in Atlanta last night. Meanwhile, her mother has told health officials that her daughter was not ill when she was back home in Ohio. The second Dallas nurse to become infected with Ebola arrived in Atlanta last night. Government officials confirmed the patient, 29-year-old Amber Vinson, was being transferred to Emory University Hospital in Atlanta, 
which has successfully treated two people who contracted the disease in Sierra Leone and Liberia and were flown back to the United States. Earlier on, a federal source said the patient told the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that she had a slight fever before she boarded a Frontier Airlines flight from Ohio to Dallas and was not told to stay back. The U.S. nurse who had treated the Dallas index patient, Thomas Eric Duncan, informed the CDC that she had a temperature of 99.5 Fahrenheit before boarding the flight on October the 13th, and since that temperature was below the CDC threshold of 100.4. She was not stopped from flying. Vincent's mother told Talmadge officials that her daughter was not ill at the time she was at her home. As for a man who had contact with Vincent, the Talmadge mayor, David Klein, confirmed he had self-quarantined himself in his home. Vincent, a worker at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas, had taken a Frontier Airlines flight to Cleveland from Dallas, Fort Worth International Airport on Friday. Vincent's trip to visit family members in Ohio put a second U.S. metropolitan area on Ebola alert. She is related to three Kent State University employees, and the school's health services director, Dr. Angela DeGilius, said they had been asked to remain off campus for 21 days. The CDC is now sending staff to Ohio to help coordinate Ebola efforts. Now, understandably, fears of the Ebola virus disease are growing in the United States, where a second nurse in Dallas, Texas, has contracted the disease. Now, in order to douse those fears, President Barack Obama canceled a political campaign trip and reassured the American public that the dangers of a serious outbreak are low. Our colleague at The Voice of America, Aru Pandey, has more from the White House. They, they are it all began with Liberian national Thomas Eric Duncan, the first Ebola case on U.S. soil, who succumbed to the deadly virus last week. Now, just days later, not one, but two of the nurses who treated Duncan at Texas Health Presbyterian Hospital in Dallas have been diagnosed with Ebola. Dr. Daniel Varga is the hospital's chief clinical officer. A lot is being said about what may or may not have occurred to cause some of our colleagues to contract this disease, but it's clear there was an exposure somewhere, sometime, in their treatment of Mr. Duncan. And with the nurse aboard a domestic flight just hours before being hospitalized Tuesday, the concerns about possible exposure have grown. The latest case prompted President Barack Obama to cancel a Wednesday campaign trip and stay in Washington for a meeting with cabinet officials. He told reporters at the White House any new U.S. Ebola cases will be much more aggressively monitored, but that current protocols in place do work. If we do these protocols properly, if we follow the steps, if we get the information out, then the likelihood of widespread uh, Ebola outbreaks in this country are very, very low. President Obama announced that special rapid response teams will be dispatched to any U.S. hospitals forced to deal with new Ebola cases. While reassuring Americans of the domestic response, President Obama said the United States cannot lose sight of the international response to the Ebola outbreak that has killed nearly 4,500 people in West Africa. I am absolutely confident that we can prevent a serious outbreak of the disease here in the United States. But it becomes more difficult to do so if this epidemic of Ebola rages out of control in West Africa. Mr. Obama said the investment the U.S. makes in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea is an investment in the public health of Americans. On Wednesday, the president underscored the need for greater international resources during phone calls with European and Japanese leaders.